Hi guys, Mrs. G here. I'm going to teach you today how to do an acrylic pour. And there's lots of other ways to do it, and you probably have a lot of these things sitting in your house. So you've probably never thought of how to do this at home unless you've done one at home before. But I'm going to use simple things like Dixie cups that you might have at home. Um, and you can do this at home or you can just watch and um, one of these days you can go out and get the things you might need. So I'm going to put a bunch of different Dixie cups down on the table and I'm going to mix up how to do this acrylic pour. Viscosity is actually really important and you're probably thinking some of you might know what viscosity is but viscosity is the thickness or the thinness of a, a liquid and it's a science thing but it's also very much an art thing. So when we do this viscosity is going to actually matter which bubbles to the surface and which sinks down the most as well. So you can do this a bunch of different ways um, then you need with a bunch of different paints. So first things first, you need the, um, the little cups and then I have mini baby um, popsicle sticks but you could use regular sticks, anything you want, anything you have um, just to be able to stir it. And I'm going to actually dump those out for right now because we don't need them in there yet because we're not stirring anything up. Um, you can use, if you want to, to make it really professional and really archival, you can use a Liquitex uh, professional pouring medium. Or, cool thing is, is you can mix this with glow-in-the-dark Elmer's glue or just like regular Elmer's glue if you don't want it to glow in the dark and it will do the same thing. It's just basically taking the paint and making it a little bit more fluid. So I'm going to take about half in each of these cups of fluid pouring medium from Liquitex and let's get it all in there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And after that I'm going to pick a few things. Now I've got some temper paint which you may or may not have because that's a very um, inexpensive paint that probably a lot of people have basically sitting at home. This one is like neon neon pink. Stick that there and I'm going to pour about half in here of neon pink. That looks really cool. And then I'm going to take, um, let's see, uh, I'm going to put hmm, some blue. It's just these little tiny craft paints. They're behind me as well that you get at Michael's or Target or anywhere else. I'm going to pour some of that blue in there. Let's see. I've got those two things. Then I'm going to take maybe a little green see get that green it's probably gonna be crazy neon yep it is so it'll show up really nicely for you and we got that in there and then I'm gonna use one of these paints this is actually a bit of a thicker paint it's a darker blue but we'll see how it works because it might it'll probably if it's a thicker paint which it's not even coming out let's see if it's a thicker paint, which is really, really thick, um, it, I don't think this is even going to work, um, which again, not a big deal. We'll grab a different paint, another craft paint, a little bit of a darker blue, and pour it in there. There we go. It's making lots of fun noises. And then maybe we'll add a little bit of purple. With the purple, and you guys could actually probably use like old sample paint or anything you wanted for this, especially if you're just having fun. So I'm gonna take the purple, lovely, lovely purple. Hope has one of her best friends loves purple. It's kind of fun. And I'm gonna add this to the to the to the, the cup, and then we're gonna stir with the, all of them. So I'm gonna just take the stir cup, stir sticks, and stir it all the way around. So it gets really fluid, if you can see that, really nice and fluid. Here's the hot pink, I'll make that really nice and fluid again. Here we go, bloop. And then take the green, mix that up really, really nicely. And then the blue, it's gonna be, it's still gonna be quite a bit thicker. I don't know if you can see the viscosity of that. It's quite a bit thicker and it's almost a little semi-transparent, which is gonna be kind of neat. And then I have the purple. Now, to make, 
the paint really even lighter, I'm going to add rubbing alcohol. And this is something that is used in the hand sanitizer that you use to make sure your hands are nice and clean. And I've got basically a whole thing oops, of hand sanitizer. I'm just gonna put a little bit, I think I'm gonna probably put it in the purple. Oops, I put a little bit in the blue too accidentally. We'll see how that all works. I'm gonna blend it all together. It's gonna be kind of cool. It's always, always, always exciting to see what happens with all of this. And so I've got all these lovely pieces together. Now, when we do this pour, we're actually gonna take, you can take anything. You could take like just a piece of cardboard if you want. You could take uh, a board. And for today, I think we're gonna use a board. So you can take a board and you're going to make sure your work area is covered. You do not want to do this on your mother's good dining room table or anything. That would be very, very bad and she would not be very happy with you. I would not be very happy with my children. And here we go. Let's see. And put all the beautiful, beautiful things down. So it's not going to get all over my table, even though this is a good mat, very nice art mat. And I've got this down. So now I'm going to take my beautiful board and I'm going to put plunk it down here. Now, so you can see this a little bit better. I'm actually going to move the camera down. I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to start pouring just a little area. Next one I'm gonna take is not the purple yet. Maybe, well maybe the purple. All right, take the purple, super, super light. You can start to see that and see what it's doing. Then I'm gonna take this blue, put that one on top, and take the really thick one, stick it on top of there. Then it needs another pop of color. Let's take it here. And I think I probably wanna repeat that pink again because it's almost gotten lost. So let's add a little bit more of the pink, a little bit more of the purple. Purple's gonna be kind of cool. And then what you can do after you think you've got enough paint is you can actually swirl it all over the place and then it marbleizes, which is really cool. So you can see all of this. It's gonna go drip down the side, which is kind of neat. And it just went all over my other mat, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna keep pouring this. And you're gonna get this really cool abstract. You can see how shiny it is. It's really kind of neat. And it's gonna keep reacting. That alcohol um, in, that one, um, in that one paint that I stuck is got a very cool viscosity. So this will keep changing for quite a while. Now, I don't know if you can see, this is still swirling. It's really quite neat. Let's see. And I've got that, but I really think I want more paint. Now I could let it pour down, which is what I'm doing right now. Put it closer to you. Still figuring all this technology out and pour it down this way. Let's see. It's kind of neat, it's kind of cool. It's changing every minute, every single minute, and it depends on the direction as well of how I'm positioning this. And I just am really loving this. This is just so, so pretty. Move, keep moving it still moving. If you can see, it's still fluid. So that's that fluid medium, but glue will work the same way. It might take you a little bit longer, but it's going to be really neat. Okay, still not completely done. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more pink. Well, I think I really like that pink. A little bit more of this purple. Stir this up some more. Oops, stir this up. Here we go some purple in here. Woo. Play with that. Add some blue into this one. Okay. I'm having way too much fun. Wish you were here with me to do this. It'd be so much more fun if you were. 
And okay, so they look like two eyeballs now. They look like googly eyes. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can. I'm doing it the wrong way. All right, and then we're gonna add some pink. Bloop, bloop. Whoa, got a lot of pink. One eyeball just got dramatically bigger than the other eyeball. And we're gonna come in here. Come in here. I think there's some blue still left. There is. Oops. A little bit here. Oops. A little bit here. Here we go. Here we go. And now we'll swirl again. Swirl that one more time. Really swirl it. Blue. Oh, super cool. All right, here it goes. Here it goes, here it goes. Oh, the top is moving again. I don't know if you can see that. It is moving. It is all moving up in here. It's all moving down. It's like a huge, big water flow, which is kind of fun. And it is significantly all over everything, but it is so fun right there. So you can see our beautiful, fabulous creation, which is kind of neat. There's a little one area we just probably want to go for, and that's what it looks like. So this is another way of very making non-objective art, and it could be a base or something, or you could leave it the way it is. It is totally up to you. Now this is going to take quite a while to dry. It really, really is. Um, which is fine. I'm just going to leave it here. This mat, and that this sounds crazy, but this mat actually has a um, this mat actually has a plastic underneath for paints and things like that. So you do not want to do this just on a regular mat or a piece of canvas. So um, just word of the wise, or to make sure you really put a whole bunch of newspapers or flyers or whatever you're getting in the mail down before you do that. And that is it. You guys are awesome. And I will post the picture once it dries because it will still start moving. I don't know if you can still see it moving. It will move probably for the next 10 or 15 minutes. And then it will still, then it will finally stabilize. So have an awesome day. Thanks for sharing this with me. And I will absolutely talk to you soon. Bye.